Good morning. Hello. Good afternoon. Whenever. Good evening. If you're watching this in the evening. Oh my gosh, you guys. Um, okay. Yep. I'm live. Um, hi. All right. So, oh, it's captioning too. I love that. At least it is on my, um, I'm, I'm watching myself or, and seeing like someone, you know, who's, Who's here? If there's any questions. Okay. So, hang on. I'm watching myself or, and seeing yep. like and someone, see. you know. Ah! Okay. <laughs> someone, you know, who's. All right. I'm so sorry. All right. Here we are. Mm, 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 mm. All right. I am going to just speak from my heart, you guys. Um, I have have, you know, um, been very busy this past year. First of all, I'm just going to start with um, who am I? Who am I? And I'll answer any questions in the comments later. I want to focus on where I'm at right now and what, um, you know, oh, universe wants to speak through me is what I've asked. So here we are. I'm Gerilyn Stevens, and um, I am a Hollywood hairstylist. I have 10 Emmy nominations, two Guild Award wins. Um, this past year, I received one for a show called HBO Max uh, uh, Legendary, is the show. It's called Legendary on HBO Max. Um, that is the most exciting creative show of my life. My dreams are literally still just flowing and happening in my life. Um, so I'm a Hollywood hairstylist. I department head um, shows like The Voice for 20, we're coming up on 22 seasons. Um, shark Tank, I work on, I do the male sharks. Been on that for like 12 years. Um, I'm working on a show, just finished a show, uh, American Song Contest, and um, what else do I do? Legendary, that's my jam, um, and then whatever fun stuff comes up with friends. So I am living my dream in Hollywood, and that literally, I'll get to that, and that's my how all of this kind of started coming about. Um, I am married for 15 years to my dream boat <laughs> he is literally the best guy for me and and i'm not gonna lie he's you know i'm the best for him too um so we have a 14 year old son he lives breeds and uh baseball uh so i am a baseball mom uh all in all and heart my heart's in it a hundred percent um i this year beat ovarian cancer this past year. Um, that's where I've been fighting, kicking ass at, on cancer. And I have to say um, the five F words, living the five F words. I've been doing um, manifestation, law of attraction uh, for two decades. Okay. Two decades. Um, and I truly believe, and you know, I won't get into it now. It, but it saved my life because it has living these steps, the five F's in my life, which is figure out what you want, focus, fearless action, feel it existing and faith. All of that has kept me in tune, clear with my body, with spirit. And that all I can say is know your, nor your normal body. Okay, know your normal body, stay connected. Um, I'm a sober woman of several years. Often, like I've had some, uh, some people might call them slips. I call it went all out. Um, I had two and a half years when I was young, like 18 to 20, almost 21. I got sober when I was 33. So when I was 33 years old, I hit bottom. I had moved to Los Angeles. I hit bottom um, and I knew I had to get sober. Like my life was dramatically dark. Um, and I, I loved to drink by myself. So and nobody really knew what was going on with me, which is kind of how I preferred my life. 
was to be, you know, uh, not people know that dark side of me. Um, and so when I got sober, I started reading all these self-help books. Cause imagine I'm in Los Angeles. I'm 33 years old. I am single. Um, I don't know a lot of people and I want to break into Hollywood. That's why I moved. Um, and I just went to the Barnes and Noble self-help section and I just started looking at all these books and I pulled a book called, um, oh my God, what is it called? Excuse me, your life is waiting. I was like, that jumped out at me. I was like, yes, yes, my life is waiting. And, and I'm telling you from that first law of attraction book, all of a sudden it was like, all of this other stuff happening the next year it was the secret came out and like i was like why are everybody why is everybody hiding all of this stuff that we need to know in life right and as soon as i got sober um i was able to get more clear um and and the darkness left me um so my point was sharing with you about my sobriety um, coming up on eight years um, because I did get six years from that point and I got my dream guy and we had a baby and then it was like, oh, maybe it was a rough time in my life. But um, I currently have um, coming up on eight years in July. So my point, if you have an addiction of any kind, I want to say to you, never stop never stop giving up. Um, I am definitely in this life as a sober woman and to help others. So anyway, it's not an AA meeting. <laughs> um, I'm a pig lover. I have two pigs currently. I had another one. He passed away. Um, we love pigs. They have uh, hair and no dander. My, my husband and son are allergic to cats and dogs and all this, you know, even the hyperallergenic. Anyway, we have pigs. We love pigs. I ride a Harley, another pig hog, right? Um, yeah, I have my own soft tail deluxe. That was something that I took up um, uh, when I was 46. So six years ago. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah, who else am I? I'm a whole lot. So are you. So are you. Um, I'm a, oh, I'm a Gigi. I am a Gigi to my husband's daughter and her three kids. Um, yeah, so I have this beautiful extended family that um, has brought me so much joy in my heart. Um, and I can't wait to not be like so far away and be, it's hard being a working grandma, <laughs> full-time working mom, grandma with a 14 year old. Okay. So anyway, life is busy. Um, so I want to talk to you of how this book came about and how the five F words came about. Um, so I, you know, discovered, like I said, when I was 33, started reading a bunch of self-help books and I, gosh, one day somebody asked me, how is it that you always get what you want? And this was after um, being married and having Eli and um, my career uh, was going quite well. I was department heading um, the voice at the time and a couple other shows. And so it was, it was like, when was that? 20, 2018? Yeah. 2018, 2018. It was 2018. I was approaching, um, a milestone birthday. I was going to be 50, uh, in 2019. And I had, was looking back at all my like successes. Right. And just how, I just wanted to share what my five F's were because she was like, what are the steps? Give me the steps. And I was like, okay, okay. First, you're going to figure out what you want. Okay. Like you're going to figure it out and then you're going to focus and then you're going to take action towards your goal. 
then you're going to feel it and turn it on like a light switch and feel it already existing. Like just turn it on like a light switch. <sighs> I'm a Hollywood hairstylist. That's what I would tell myself before I actually was. I'm a Hollywood hairstylist. Yes, that still makes me so happy, you guys. And then I'm like, faith, faith in universe, faith in, faith in God, whatever it is, faith in yourself, believe in yourself. And so she was, she was the, the one who was, she's a songwriter and she was like, well, just put an F in front of action and you've got the five F's. I was like, what, what? Okay. So fearless, fearless was the obvious choice because what stops us? Fear, fear stops us from doing what we want to do because fear will tell you you're not good enough. Fear will say, what will people think? Fear will say that you don't deserve that, right? Fear stops us all the time. So you have to be fearless and bust through it. So anyway, I started speaking to cosmetology students because that's my jam, right? Hair, hair people are my jam. And I wanted to share with all these young um, uh, prof you know, future professionals in our industry on how I became a Hollywood hairstylist. Because when I walked in to, I actually was in beauty school and one of my friends started dating a guy, a grip, and we were living in Seattle. And so the moment she, he invited us to set, right? It was a big movie. Uh, it was like with Kevin Costner. I don't even know the name of it, but I got to go in the hair and makeup trailer and I got to talk to everybody and everybody was so fabulous and so nice. And they're like, oh, if you want to do this, come to LA. And I was like, oh my God, yes. Okay. And, um, and I just wanted to share, listen, I'm a girl from Northern Michigan. I moved to Seattle when I was 21 I ended up, you know, discovering the moment I walked on set, it was like an aha moment. I knew right then that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to just work in a salon, okay? I wanted to be in Hollywood on set because it seemed so wonderful and glamorous. And if you're in this industry, you know it's, it's, <laughs> it is wonderful and glamorous, but it's not all that. Trust me. There's times I've been like in a field of dirt and bugs and nasty, but, um, Anyway, I just wanted to share with cosmetology students on how to F it, right? Right. Let's F it together. And, you know, that that other F word is one of my faves. Don't get me wrong. And I'm sorry if you're offended, but it's not that F word. You know, it's the figure out what you want. Focus. Fearless action. Feel it existing and faith. And the cosmetology, I spoke at hair shows and at schools and, and people started asking me for a book. And I never imagined in a million years that I would actually write a book. And so after like the fifth person, normally you guys, you're going to get to a point where it's like three times, two, three times you hear something, you're like, okay, universe, I hear you. Um, Cause it will all happen like, you know, synchronicity. It's like all like happening. And then all of a sudden I just heard that, oh, I just was thinking about that. I I, I should read that book, right? And that's how actually, excuse me, your life is waiting. That first self-help book I re read, um, it was like three people in one week said that book. And I, and I was like, gosh, that's so crazy. Like you're the third person to tell me that this week. And he's like, that means you're supposed to read it. And I was like, oh, really? And it was all so brand new. So if you're new here, know that if you hear things, you know, um, over and over, a couple, two, three, five times, um, you're supposed to do it. So I hired a writing coach and she helped me write this book. Okay. My intention was to make it small. It is like 97 pages. Um, and I wanted to make it basically a guidebook, a how to. Um, I knew it didn't need to be a novel. I wanted to have it just be quick, easy, and um, for you to be able to start living your life, okay, the way you want to live your life. Um, that's the problem, you guys, is we are always manifesting. I mean, is it a problem? 
It depends. It depends how you think. It depends how, um, you know, first of all, you need clarity. You need to put intention. And that's where figuring out what you want in my book, if you want to get the book, it's always a great guide. Even last night, I, um, cause I've taken a couple years off you guys of like speaking in front of people. And I'm actually speaking at a hair show Sunday. And I was like, what is the best way for me to get back at it? Right. Get back at it. Let's I'm getting back at it with you. Yeah. Um, so figuring out what you want, you want to have clarity. Okay. Cause most people will be manifesting, but not even know they're manifesting. So whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, both are true, right? I tell this to my son all the time. Actually, I don't have to tell him that much anymore because he's heard it enough. Um, yeah, you think you can't? I'm like, oh yeah, well you can't because you are thinking you can't. If I believe in you, but you don't believe in yourself, right? Then it's not gonna happen. So believe in yourself and know that you can do whatever it is that you want. And to, if you desire, whatever you desire, all right? And so sometimes I know um, if, if I'm not putting intention in things, um, things take a lot longer. Um, I sometimes wonder like if I had known about um, creating our life, co-creating our life with the universe, if I had known how to do that when I was younger, before I was 33 um, and discovering law of attraction, I think things would have happened a lot quicker, but everything happens for a reason, right? So the moment I started putting intention and doing the things that are in this book, okay, I got my first break in Hollywood two months later, okay, two months later. And even with this book, with this um, speaking to students, so in 2018, I'm backtracking, when I decided to speak to students, and share how I've been blessed with this incredible life, I, oh my gosh, it only took like four months. I think I decided like in February, March. No, it was more like May. I got a life coach in March of 2018. And by the time October rolled around, I had my first, um, I went on a TV show as a guest host. I um, was asked to speak in January at the LA Hair Show in Long Beach and the Orlando Hair, Hair Show in or, um, June of 2019. And I was like, wow, those are huge shows. And so I had to prepare. I got a life coach. Um, I got a writing coach. I got a speaking coach. I mean, I'm telling you, coach... People in my life, I'm I'm over therapy, okay? Bye-bye therapy. Don't need to like dwell up the past. Guess what? This is who I who we're here. I'm here from all of that other stuff, right? Everything that's happened in my life has made me who I am. Now, how do we move forward? We move forward with integrity and positivity and gratitude and so much. Okay. There's just so much. I need to write a book like the five F words to manifesting your life 2.0, <laughs> but we're going to stick to basics, figure out what you want. Okay. So with figuring out what you want, um, figuring out what you want is where all the magic happens, right? It's where you get clear, you get clarity, um, and you put intention into your daily life. I want you to get a journal uh, a notebook. I have one sitting over there. Um, I actually wrote notes here because I don't want to forget anything with you. Um, but yes, figuring out what you want is where you get all the magic, right? And so if you're not really sure, some people know exactly what they want and you write it down, write down everything that you want. 
And even like, just like, let yourself go. Write down the most crazy stuff. If you want it, write it down. Okay, and I promise you, one day you will believe it. Because sometimes, like I'll write stuff down and I'm like, okay, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's um, a practice, right? The five F words are a practice. Um, so for, okay, so when you're manifesting, for instance, I have a great story. I have a great story. Um, when I first discovered law of attraction and figuring out what I wanted, I knew I wanted to be a Hollywood hairstylist. Um, and I also knew I wanted to be married. Um, and I wanted, to, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to test this. So I wrote down tall, dark, handsome. Um, you know, I said he must love his family. That was really important to me because my family, I love my family. I do. Um, I have a turbulent relationship with my mother. Um, won't go into that here. Um, but like, you know, I, my mother-in-law is oh, incredible. She has taken me in like a daughter. So I just, yeah, I really needed that. And that's what I, I wrote down is I wanted to, you know, ha be like a daughter to my mother-in-law. And um, I said, uh, sisters or, you know, that love me too. And it turned out um, my husband actually has a daughter and she was at the time 15, almost 16. But um, so I'm like tall, dark, handsome, must love his family. Um, and I was like, well, and I'm sure I wrote down a bunch of other stuff too, but I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to say make over six digits. No, I didn't say that. I said, oh, sorry. I said, he must be rich because if I'm going to do this, make him rich, right? Ah, rich. And so um, I was working at a barbershop on Sunset called Rudy's Barbershop. And there was this guy um, who valet parked. And he kept asking me out and he was really nice and he was tall, dark, handsome, all this stuff, right? Um, and so we started dating and we dated for a few months. And I was like, he loved his mom too. Like his mom was, I, I only talked to her a couple times, but she was really sweet. And he was a really nice guy. But the more I talked to him, you know, well, what's your ambition? Like, what do you want to do in life? Um, you know, cause I mean, I want to be a Hollywood hairstylist, not quite there yet, but what are your goals? And so it really turned out that I was telling my girlfriends, I was like, well, he's not, he, you know, he's, he's just not. I don't know. He doesn't have any future goals. Um, he's not ambitious. And it's, I never knew ambition was sexy to me. Um, and, the, and my girlfriend goes, oh, poor Rich. <laughs> and I was like, we both cackled like schoolgirls. We were like, oh my God, I got exactly what I wanted. I got a guy named Rich. And um, sorry, Rich, but he turned out to have an amazing life. So anyway, um, and got what he wanted. Right. He wanted to be a stay at home dad. So, um, yeah, I, you know, discovered at that moment that the universe has a sense of humor. So I was like, OK, I hear you. All right. I need to go back to the drawing board. I need to get more clear. So what does it mean to be rich? I wanted him to make over six digits. I wanted him to be ambitious, love his work, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, have financial freedom, things like, you know, th those are things that um, I needed to get really clear on because I did not know that until I discovered rich could be a name. Um, and oh, wow, that was, a, that was a good learning experience. But anyway, if you want help figuring out what you want, because I know for me, it was really difficult. It was really hard for me to really sit down and think about what I wanted. I'm going to take a little sip of water. Excuse me. Drink your water. Get one of these big jugs. 64 ounces. I drink one to one and a half of those a day. They say it keeps your skin looking good. Um, and detoxifies all the toxins out of your body. Okay. Um, okay. So what an easy tip trick I have in the book 
also is write down to help you figure out what you want. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, is write down what you don't want. Um, I will suggest, and honestly, it's like you're not really supposed to think with law of attraction. You're not really supposed to think about what you don't want, right? Because then you attract what you don't want. But for this particular lesson and helping you get clear, so like if you know you want to be, you're in cosmetology school and you want to uh, be a hairstylist, um, so what don't you want, right? Um, for me, I wrote, and by the way, I did work as an apprenticeship for a year and a half. I worked in a salon and a barber shop for a total of eight years while I was breaking into the business. Uh, I, I worked in a barber shop in Hollywood for like three or four years. Um, so I did work, um, both. So, but I knew I wanted to be a Hollywood hairstylist. So what didn't I want? Um, eventually I knew I didn't want to have an agent. I knew I didn't want to uh, do red carpet TV commercial. I wanted more TV competition shows. I wanted TV competition shows because the schedule is more of a mom life. Okay. Um, they're not Monday through Friday. So I made a list of everything I didn't want. I didn't want to work with people who uh, are drama. Right. So if you're, you know, I don't want to work with people who are always um, drama surrounding them. I want to work with, I don't want to, it, just write down like 10 things that you know you don't want. Maybe you don't even have to do that. Okay. I'm just helping you to get clear if you need to figure out exactly what you want. So figure out exactly what you want. And sometimes you have to figure out what you don't want in order to know what the opposite of that is. Um, uh, let's see. It's just like, I didn't know when I was in beauty school, I did not know that I wanted to be in Hollywood until like, uh -huh, I walked on set, right? On that movie in Seattle. I was like, oh, oh yeah, this is what I want. Okay. So it may take a little moment, some time for you to really figure out exactly what you want. But if you know, say, oh, I want to work in a salon, um, but you don't know if it wants to be a high-end salon, something like a barber shop or whatever, right? You will know it when you start to take the action to figure it out, okay? So you might walk into a salon and be like, oh, like when you are interviewing salons, and if you're getting out of beauty school or you move states, um, you walk into a salon and you're like, oh, this vibe is cool. I like this. The people are cool. They're saying hi. They're, you know, it doesn't feel catty, that kind of thing. Okay. So that's how you can get really clear on what you want. Um, one of the most important things is you need to know you deserve it. Okay. You need to know you deserve everything that you want in your life. This is your life. This is for you, okay? No one else is living your life. You are living your life. So what kind of life do you want, right? Um, I want you to believe that you are worthy because I did not believe that for a very long time. In my 20s and my teens, my teens and my 20s, they were rough guys. Um, in my heart, in my soul, in my, you know, the way I believed about myself, um, a lot of my choices and actions show that. So if you look at your life, you might be able to tell like, oh yeah, um, I really did not believe I deserved much because of the choices and actions that I made for myself. So um, I want you to know that, you know, a lot of that subconscious too. So our self image of ourself. And, and I want you to believe in you and if you can't believe in yourself, I will believe in you, okay? I will believe in you. Um, but yes, you, I want you to know you deserve everything, no matter what you've gone through. And that's why I've shared so much of myself. Um, I'm an open book. Um, yeah, 
because you are not alone. You are not alone. I am here. There's so many other women and, and people and humans in this world that have been through the same things. And that's kind of what I, I figured out on, uh, I use social media a lot, um, uh, through my ovarian cancer. And I met so many people that were going through the same thing. And I'm telling you, even though we've never met in person, we have DM'd, we have supported one another. Um, I've had people tell me, I've read your blog and it's really helped me. And these are things that we're here to be of service. We're here to be of love and share our love and light. Okay. And that's what my intention is here is to help you whoever may be listening or watching, um, you know, think about your lifestyle. What kind of lifestyle you want? And here's the thing, I'm 52 and I am still evolving. And it's like all these things like change and I want you, you're always manifesting. You're always creating your life. So don't think like just because I became the Hollywood hairstylist and have these awards and nominations, do I stop? No, it's, I love that part of my life, but now I'm figuring out, I'm figuring out, I want to add more to my life. I want to, here, this is what I'm doing, five Fs. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, leading my life further down the road. So just sharing, you know, here and there or, or support. I don't know. You know, I want to share my light and love with all who wants to listen or do it themselves um, in, in the future. So I'm talking like the next 10 years, right? I've got a five year, a three, a three, a five, you know, I've got goals. So I want you to think about your lifestyle. Okay. Um, what kind of lifestyle do you, do you want to live in an apartment? Do you want to live in a house? Do you want to live in the, you know, the mountains at the beach? What kind of lifestyle do you want to have for yourself? Uh, what kind of career do you want to work with people? Do you want to work from home? Do you, you know, um, want to work in a cubicle? Do you not want to, you know, I mean, what kind of career do you see for yourself? Uh, how much money do you want to make? I mean, let's not leave that out, especially the way things are so freaking expensive right now. Um, geez, Louise, it's it's so much. The price of gas I saw on TV this morning here in LA was seven fifty in like Beverly Glen, which is near Beverly Hills. Um, but I was just like, that is outrageous. Um, so, what kind of money do you want to make? I want financial freedom. What does that mean? Financial freedom means I don't have to think about a budget. I don't have to think, oh, you know, can I afford that? No, I want to be able to be like, oh, wow, okay, well, I guess write the check for that or Venmo or whatever, right? Zell. Um, you know, I don't want to have to worry about money. What would you do if you couldn't fail? Wow. What could you do if you couldn't fail? That is a big question because it's like so many of us are scared to pursue things or, you know, it's, it's you, people are scared of what other people are going to think. People are not feeling deserving. So, uh, all of that, right, that we've discussed. So what would you do if you couldn't fail, right? So anyway, um, I just want to share with, okay, so it's 35 minutes. I, 34. Okay. So I'm going to wrap it up tomorrow. I am going to go into focus. Okay. What that means where energy flows, where focus goes, energy flows. Okay. So yeah. All right. Oh my gosh. I feel so good. I hope you guys feel empowered. I hope you're feeling um, inspired to really put intention into your life, okay? And if you don't have the book, you can get it on Amazon. Um, yes, I'm self-promoting, um, but here's what I really need from you guys. Um, if you have purchased my book, I would love a five-star review. 
okay? If you've purchased the book and you feel that it's helped you, it's an easy guide to um, create, helping you stay focused and on track, um, and, and I would love a review, a five-star review on Amazon. That would help me. But anyway, I will answer all your questions and comments as they come up. Um, and I want you to have a beautiful, blessed day. I'll be back here tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. I love you. Have a great day.